What's going on guys? I hope you are staying safe and sane during these difficult times. I'm coming at you today delivering a little piece of positivity and inspiration hopefully with three of my top Photoshop editing hacks that I use in almost all of my portrait photos. I believe these three editing techniques will help you vastly improve your portrait photos. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, Justin Lawrence here, and if this is your first time on my YouTube channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I am a full-time portrait photographer, course creator, and entrepreneur, and this YouTube channel is all about helping you take and edit better portrait photos. If that sounds good to you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you don't miss another video. So this first hack is a big one. This is something I do in a lot of my portraits to help make the colors pop more. And the whole concept is based on using the selective color tool right over here. But in this case, we have to be more selective with how we use our selective color tool. So for example, what we can do is invert our layer mask here and now apply this selective color tool adjustment specifically to different objects within our frame. So in this case, we're targeting our model's sweater right over here and we want to make it pop more. We want to differentiate it in terms of its color from the other elements that are within the frame. Now the selective color tool is great because you can go into your image, target certain colors right over here, select them and completely change them by adjusting and moving these sliders that you see within the box right over here. So let's say for example, we wanted to add a little bit more cyan into this and reduce the amount of reds in the sweater. We could go ahead and do that. We can increase a little bit more magenta or reduce it to make add a little bit more green into the sweater and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at a before and after. As you can see, such a powerful way to make those colors pop. So I've now gone ahead and repeated these steps for different elements within our frame, including the couch, the pillow, as well as our model skin. So let's take a look at a before and after for all applied effects. Isn't that amazing? The selective color tool, it's so powerful, it's so versatile, it offers so much control in terms of making selective and targeted color adjustments within your photo. So continuing on now to our second Photoshop editing hack. It has a focus on making the hair more voluminous, more magical looking, and just in general, more visually pleasing to the eye. And it involves two steps. The first is to add volume and curves. The second is to add shine. So first step, what we want to do is create a stamp of all visible underlying layers. And to do that, let's hold down Shift, Alt, Command, N, Shift, Alt, Command, E. Then you want to right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object. This will allow you to work non-destructively. So to go back into the applied effects and make necessary adjustments if needed. So once that is done, let's go over to filter liquify and let's go over to this warp icon over here. And the general rule of thumb is to accentuate any slight curve that you are already seeing in the hair. So we just want to go ahead and accentuate this by just clicking, dragging, and pulling it out slightly. In doing so, you're adding some beautiful curves to the hair. You're keeping it natural, but you're also adding a bit more of an enhancement to the volume and to the general magical aesthetic of the hair. And that's looking good to me, so let's go ahead and hit OK. Let's take a look at a before and after here, before and after. So already it's looking great, but we're not done yet. Next step, what we want to do is go over to our new adjustment layer right over here. And we're going to do this in two parts to add the shine. First is to click on levels adjustment layer. Let's hit command I on the layer mask to invert it. Let's go ahead and hit B for the brush tool. And now we want to apply this effect specifically to the highlights in the hair. So let's go ahead and make sure white is selected and we're painting this effect 
onto the highlights in our model's hair, you won't see any applied effect just yet. We're just telling Photoshop where we eventually want to see this effect to be visible. So once that's done, now you want to go over to the white point slider right over here, click and drag this to the left. Something like that looks good. Let's take a look at a before and after and a better way to target the highlights in our subject's hair is to double click on this layer and we're going to go ahead and use blend if. So this will help to isolate this applied effect even further further target the specific area that we're trying to apply an effect to. So let's go ahead and hold Alt and click right next to the black point slider over here. Let's click and drag this to the left. This will further help to isolate this effect away from the shadows and towards the highlights in our hair. So something like that looks good. Hit enter. Let's take a look at a before and after, before and after, that's looking great. We're almost at the finish line. Next step, what we want to do is click New Adjustment Layer, go over to Levels, and we want to now apply this effect to slightly darken the shadows in the hair. So you're going to create this contrast, which will create a pop, make it look more three-dimensional, and further add to that magical, luscious look. So let's hit Command-I on the layer mask, hit B for the brush tool, Let's now start to paint in this effect into the shadows in our subject's hair. And now that's done, we can go over to the black point slider over here and start to move this until you are satisfied. You don't want to make it too dark, but you just want to add a subtle effect just to add that pop, that extra contrast boost. So let's take a look at it before and after, before and after. Honestly, that is really all you need. So let's take a look at the applied effect of the shine right over here. So let's rename the shine. Let's take a look at a before and after, before and after. Such a subtle difference creates such a dramatic effect. Now let's take a look at both applied effects put together. So you have a before and after, before and after. Okay guys, now it's time for the third Photoshop editing hack. This one is awesome. I really love it. It especially is helpful if you are low on time and you want to quickly apply a powerful color contrast to your image. So you want to make your subject pop from the background. You want to make your photo look more engaging and eye-catching. This is what you need to do. So first and foremost, let's make a stamp by hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and N, and then Command, Alt, Shift, and E. Now now let's go up to the select subject. This is a really great way to identify where the subject is. This can help you to save a ton of time to help you isolate an applied effect to your subject independent of the background. So now we have our main subject selected. Let's go ahead and create a mask here. Now what we want to do is apply an effect quickly to our subject and what we're going to use in this case is the camera raw filter. So let's go over to filter, camera raw filter. Now what we want to do when we're creating a color contrast is to have some warmer tones, warmer colors to our subject, to our subject's skin and some cooler tones, some blues into the background. So now that we have our subject masked out, we have our subject selected, let's go ahead and boost the temperature a little bit here. Let's add some warmth, some yellows into our subject like so. That's looking good. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, as you can see, if we hit a before and after, we've applied some warm colors to our subject independent of our background. So what we want to do now is go ahead and repeat this process, but for the background. So let's go ahead and hit Shift, Alt, Command, N, Shift, Alt, Command, E to create a stamp. And now what you want to do is go ahead and create a layer mask, but we want to hold Alt, copy over this layer mask to this new layer, hit Yes. Then we're going to click on the layer mask again, hit Command I. And now, my friends, we have selected the background. As you can see, if you hold Alt and click on the layer mask, you can see that we have selected the background. So let's once again click onto our layer, go into Filter, Camera Raw Filter, with our background selected. We can now once again go over to our white balance right over here, very quickly, move this to the left, not too far, but something like that is good. Remember, subtle is the name of the game here. Once you're happy, hit OK. 
Let's look at a before and after there. Now let's group these two together to see a before and after to quickly make your subject pop from the background with some color contrast. That's a before and after. Isn't that amazing? So easy to do, so quick to do. It's as simple as that. So I hope you enjoyed these three editing techniques. As always, I would love to hear your feedback and connect with you in the comments down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more like this. New videos every single week. So that's it from me guys. Please stay safe, do take care, and I look forward to seeing you next week in the next video.